In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And welcome, brothers and sisters, to our celebration of the Eucharist today. We are gathered as a family of God, and we come before the altar of the Lord, just offering ourselves, bringing ourselves as we are today, and we just give it to the Lord. And, and I invite you to bring all your hopes and your joys and all your fears and your concerns as they just, just place them at the altar of the Lord. For those who are watching online, you are welcome um, to join us today. We are very much united, although we are physically separated, we are very much united in the Spirit of God who is in our midst. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and to make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the second letter of St. John. It has given me great joy to find that your children have been living the life of truth as we were commanded by the Father. I am writing now, dear lady, not to give you any new commandment, but the one which we were given at the beginning, and to plead, let us love one another. To love is to live according to his commandments. This is the commandment which you have heard since the beginning, to live a life of love. There are many deceivers about in the world, refusing to admit that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. They are the deceiver, they are the antichrist. Watch yourselves, or all our work will be lost and not get the reward it deserves. If anyone does not keep within the teaching of Christ, but goes beyond it, he cannot have God with him. Only those who keep to what he taught can have the Father and the Son with them. The Word of the Lord. They are happy who follow God's law. They are happy whose life is blameless, who follow God's law. They are happy who do his will seeking him with all their hearts. I have sought you with all my heart. Let me not stray from your commands. I treasure your promise in my heart, lest I sin against you. Bless your servant, and I shall live, and obey your word. Open my eyes that I may see the wonders of your law. Thank you to stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Word of God is something alive and active. It can judge secret emotions and thoughts. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Jesus said to the disciples, As it was in Noah's day, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating and drinking, marrying wives and husbands, right up to the day Noah went into the ark. The flood came and destroyed them all. It will be the same as it was in Lot's day. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, God rained fire and brimstone from heaven and it destroyed them all. It will be the same when the day comes for the Son of Man to be revealed. When that day comes, anyone on the housetop with his possessions in the house must not come down to collect them, nor must anyone in the fields turn back either. Remember Lot's wife. Anyone who tries to preserve his life will lose it, and anyone who loses it will keep it safe. I tell you, on that night, two will be in one bed. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding corn together. One will be taken, the other left. The disciples interrupted. Where, Lord? They asked. He said, where the body is, there too will the vultures gather. The Gospel of the Lord. I got a WhatsApp message from one of my friends this morning and it said Friday the 13th 2020 what could possibly go wrong? I think that kind of sums up how we all feel at this time and I, I suppose when I was thinking about that message then I thought about today's gospel and I thought well lots could go wrong you know our liturgy just now is really reminding us that Jesus is going to come again I think we forget that sometimes that Jesus is going to come again and he's going to come in his glory now for some that might be frightening news but the, the word, the liturgy of the word, the scriptures are telling us that for God's faithful, this is something to look forward to. Because when he comes in his glory, it's our liberation at last. It's something to prepare ourselves for. And that's what the liturgy about this time is reminding us. That as we await his coming, we can already prepare the ground for that coming. We see in that letter of St. John today, the second letter of St. John, and, and there's two parts to the letter that, that are really important for us. The first is a reminder of the ultimate commandment, to love one another. So St. John goes as far as to say, actually, that is the hallmark of the church. People should be able to look at us and say, look how they love one another. That's the witness that we're called to proclaim to the world. That our lives should be dedicated to that principle of love in all things and in all times. And love isn't about liking one another or always getting on with one another. Love is about dying to ourselves. Allowing Christ's spirit to enter into our hearts that that spirit of Christ might live in us. And the second part of John's letter is a warning. He says that there's deceivers out there. You know, what, what John is talking about there is, is not fake news. He's talking about something much more profound than that. He says, there are some people who deny that the Son of God is Jesus become man. That there are some people who deny the historical existence of Jesus. And he's reminding us to keep the faith. That that's fundamental to who we are. That Jesus is the Son of God, made man, 
who came that we might have salvation, who shares our human condition, who empties himself of his Godhead, who dies on the cross so that we might be raised up to a new dignity as the sons and daughters of God. And so what John is saying is, no matter what's going on in the world, and Luke is saying that in the gospel too, no matter the signs that you see, don't become distracted. Stay focused. Live the life of love and of faith in Christ Jesus who lives among us and who will come in glory to liberate us at last. Now in faith we turn to our Lord as we place before him our prayers for the church and for the world. We pray today for all the members of the church that we may remain faithful to Christ who was born among us and who comes to redeem us and that we may express our faith through our love for one another. Lord, in your mercy, we pray today for all those who serve us in government, especially at this difficult time. That the Lord will give them wisdom and strength and courage to do what is right. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray today for all those who are sick. We pray for those who are facing death this day. That the Lord may be with them always. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And I invite you now in the silence of your own hearts just to place your prayers before the Father. God, our Heavenly Father, your only Son once came to us as man. We long for him to come again in his glory. May his coming find us faithful to him and faithful to his command to love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in Jews may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that, celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it with loving devotion, through Christ our Lord. 
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. O Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. O Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when someone said it, he took the chance, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite those of you in the church to, without socially contacting each other, um, just to offer each other the sign of peace. And for those of you who are watching online, just to offer each other the sign of peace if you can. And if you're on your own, just to place someone before the Lord for whom you want his peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that, by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. two invitations to make to you this morning. The first is um, the circle of prayer which takes place tonight and you're all very welcome. You just go to our website catholicerskine.website and click on the link for the circle of prayer. The circle of prayer is just a, a group of people who get together to pray as the name suggests. They pray for one another, they pray with one another 
And tonight we're reflecting on the life of, of Blessed Margaret Sinclair. So please, if you've not joined us in the Circle of Prayer, please do so tonight. Dead easy. As I say, go to the, the website, click on the link, and you're there. The other invitation that I'd make to you is on Tuesday of this coming week, we are having a mission tour, which is basically a, a Zoom meeting where there's a presentation about some of the principles that we're trying to adopt in our parishes to renew them, to equip them for the challenges that we face in this time. So please come and join us for that as well. Again, all you have to do is sign up for that. Go to the website, catholicerskine.website, and there is a, a, a big a link there. That you just look, click on the link, fill in your details, and we would see you on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to, to be with us at Mass today, to take this time, for taking this time to, to give it to God. And I pray that God will bless you for your, your dedication. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you.